Hi everyone, as you can see I'm not currently in my office so it's not the typical environment because I'm here with my friend to show you one of the projects that we've been working on for the past few weeks. So the device in question is this GPS tracker that we've built using LoRa and that's this module over here. If you've been following the channel you can check the video up here that I did before on using that LoRa module together with this re receiver over here where I tested the range of these uh, modules and for now we've combined it together with this GPS receiver as you can see that receiver is tiny and this circuit around it is just an evaluation board so we can use the sensor more easily and if the whole thing goes as planned then maybe later on at the future stage we can do a custom PCB that fits uh, for the GPS I don't know tell me down in the comments if you are interested to see that this video is sponsored by Altium 365 and its great electronic part search engine Octopart. Octopart is a real-time part selection assistant and search engine that is used as primary source for component data in Altium Designer and Altium 365. Octopart gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, datasheets and CAD models right in the design environment so you can focus on your designs. With the built-in stock level tracking, you can always be one step ahead of the current supply risks and get automated notifications for low stock levels. Keep your design momentum going by having the right component info handy in the design environment and trust Octopart to recommend the best components to fit your criteria so you can focus on problem solving and creative thinking. Visit the link in the video description to get your Altium Designer free trial along with a free subscription to Altium 365 and visit octopart.com to find the right components for your next project. So this project consists of two parts. We have the receiver here that is connected with an app that Slavko built and you can check more details about the app on his channel that will be linked up here and down in the description. And the receiver that's mounted there on the bike with the very scientific method of using just electrical tape. Now the point of this test that we are running here Today is to show it how it works and I will be located here with the phone and the receiver and Slavko will go and drive around this park to see if we can track his location. You can use this out in the woods, you can use this on hunting, on biking trips, you can use it on mountaineering and whenever you need to track with someone else and you're not requiring a GSM connection on the transmitter part instead. The entire communication is done through LoRa and then the app on the phone, which already has GSM, will be used to track your location, which is marked with the blue marker and show you the location of the uh, transmitter along with the last 10 points that we have for that location. So you can see where the uh, tracker has been and where it's going depending on the markers that you see on the, on the map. Uh, this idea is great, so if you want to kind of track uh, dogs on hunting so in this situation I'm gonna be the dog <laughs> <laughs> And here you can see this is Slavko currently and this is the pad that he took and I'm still here standing with the phone. That's my location and you can see that he is going this direction. He is going to make a circle around the park and come back here again to join me. And the whole communication, as I said before, is done through the LoRa board. So this system is really we think it's really awesome when you need to track something but you don't want to have a separate GSM with a separate uh, plan and separate payment but instead you can use LoRa and in the mountain for example this can be very helpful because there are, might be places that you don't have the reception and you can have the offline map using the GPS location on your phone and then 
the GPS location on the tracker and you can track, as Slavko said, your dog, for example, or any colleagues that you have that are together with you on that mountaineering trip or on that bicycle ride that's out in, I don't know, somewhere. These are the dots, so some of them are not close together because I tried to ride faster at that, uh, at that part. The full explanation about the application and how everything is connected and how everything works is gonna be on my YouTube channel, so check it out if you like. Link in the description. Now let's jump to my electronic bench where it's less noisy and I'll explain you how the whole system works and how the electronics work. And here we are back at the bench. The devices are in front of you. If you've been watching my channel, you'll probably recognize them. This uh, is the receiver that I had in my LoRa test video. And this one here with this LoRa board over here is the one that I had in my car where I was testing the range of how far these two can communicate. And the only addition is this uh, logic level shifter you can see the video for it up here in the in the corner and the star of the show of this project which is this rys 8830 uh, gps receiver as you can see the receiver is tiny measuring just 11 by 11 millimeters and it's two millimeters in thickness and this around it is a support board that uh was provided kindly by Rayx, which is the manufacturer of that GPS module, along with another receiver that I have here for maybe some future applications. So the, the way that this works now, in the previous setup, we had the two LoRa boards talking to, together, and we had this one connected with an O2G adapter to the phone where when it sent the message, it was received back and uh, out on the phone. Now, this one is the device that connects with the phone. And this one just talks to the GPS to acquire a signal, to acquire the position, translates it back uh, to latitude and longitude, and then it sends that latitude longitude over to the other uh, module that's then connected to the phone. And that, phone reads that data through serial to show it back on the map you can see as we said before you can see all of the details about the app on slavko's channel and here even though this looks complicated it's really not the node mcus are used as a regular microcontroller so the wi-fi is not used here we have the logic level shifter that needs to convert the 3.3 volt signal down to 1.8 that this device requires and that's with the sole purpose of being very low power so it can be done in mobile application as we said probably in a dog tracker or any application that could requires tracking of certain objects through gps and on the setup here that i have is just uh, I'm using this evaluation board as a breakout for the module. So here we have the serial wires coming in. Uh, we have um, one of this is ground. One, one of this is providing five volts before the regulator. As you can see, I've soldered the wire directly on the input of the USB and that goes through this uh, regulator and then through these circuits to regulate it down to 1.8, which is required for the uh, for the receiver. It's it won't handle any larger voltage than that. So for the sake of demoing the project, I just use this evaluation board to 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 be able to get the voltages and to be able to get the proper breakout this one here i'm tapping into the 1.8 volts that is generated from here from the evaluation board of the gps module and that goes through the logic level shifter so we know once we set a high voltage from here which is 3.3 from the node mcu we know that's this shifter knows to then convert that to 1.8 to send it to the serial of the uh, Rayx module that we use for positioning. 
And here is the entire software part of the uh, project. On the left, we have the sketch running on the GPS module and it's named GPS to LoRa, which means that it acquires the GPS signal and it then sends to LoRa. And on the right, we have the receiving part of the code, which is LoRa to app. Because that's simpler, I'll start by that. And you can see here that it's really just a short sketch. Whenever we have available data on the serial that the LoRa module is connected to, we extract the message that that uh, signal carries, and then we just print it out to the serial output of the uh, node MCU, which is then read by the application. And here on the left, you can see that we set up the uh, the GPS object. I'm using the tiny GPS plus library for uh, decoding the GPS signal. And the most important part here to the GPS, as you can see, it's connected through serial as well, uh, same as the LoRa module, uh, is the set of commands that we send to initiate and make uh, the GPS module into the right state. At the beginning, uh, we set the module to idle state, then we set the frequ frequency of how often should the data be acquired. Uh, with the next command, we with the third one, we tell it that it should use all of the available satellites and services that it has. And from its data sheet, we can see that it has receivers for the standard GPS, but it also has receivers for the GLONASS system, SBS, QZ, SS, BIDU, and Galileo, which means that whenever we are using all of them, whatever satellites we have, in view, those will be the ones used for positioning. So this gives us like extremely well coverage uh, through the entire Earth, uh, no matter where you are or where you need to uh, use this module. Uh, you can here hear, see all of the features that uh, the module has. You can see that the chip is powered by Sony. Um, and it has a position accuracy of one meter with the embedded antenna. So now that we've set the module to use all of the available services of satellites, we need to tell it that it should now start with acquiring location. And basically with that, we've had now properly set up the module. And within the loop section, we're constantly checking in to see if we have available data on the serial, uh, on the GPS serial. And if we do, we try to encode that data into a proper location, into a proper object. And if that was encoded as a proper object, then we go into the display info function where we are first checking if that location is valid. And if it is, then we are sending that data through LoRa. I won't stick to the uh, LoRa sending part because it's exactly the same as in my uh, LoRa testing video. You can check that out, uh, but also, you have the code here, so you can basically look at that yourself. And all in all, that's about it. If for some reason we have some problem with the receiver and we do not receive any data within five seconds from turning on, then we just display a message that uh, there is a problem with the communication with the GPS. So we need to check the wiring and restart the process again. With that being said, I really think that this is an interesting approach into tracking uh, like we said before, your dog or your partner when going hiking or mountaineering, it really detaches you from having access to GSM signal and having another GSM module where you can um, connect to the internet because those services are not always available everywhere, especially in remote locations. But this one will be reliable because the communication is done independently and the phone on the receiving part is just used as a display for the information that's gathered and, and provided to it. Um, commercial systems like this exist and they cost out to the upwards of $1,000 even. Uh, and this setup only costs like, um, I don't know, $20 or something. All in all, uh, I'll have links to all of the things that you need. And if you're interested that we take this system to the next level 
and make it smaller, make it more transportable, like making a custom PCB or uh, design or whatever, then please let me know down in the comments and maybe me and Slavko, we can work uh, more on this to refine the whole thing and make it smaller and more portable so you guys can use it. Again, if you want to see that, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. There are many awesome projects that are coming along. So I hope to see you all again soon. And before you go, if you like this video, then I'm sure that you're going to like this one where I make a solar charge controller. Uh, so make sure to also check that out.